Thank, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I, I've written about the car ownership issue in Prague as well, and the, the declining trends are, are, I think, really positive. I think that's good, and I think the densifying and thickening the city will only help this condition. Henry Foy is going to moderate this panel. And Henry, are you, uh, are you in the house? Okay. Henry Foy is the uh, Financial Times correspondent for Central and Eastern Europe. Henry's based in Warsaw, uh, and he's uh, been kind enough to come to Prague to, to discuss uh, Ypres' plan with them. And I think, Henry, we would hope that you can look at this from an economic perspective in the context of Europe. So, Henry, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Thank you, Martin. Thanks for that fantastic uh, presentation. Um, yeah, I, I'm based in Warsaw. I cover uh, Central Europe uh, from from there. Um, it's interesting. When I was asked to do this job uh, about two years ago by my editor, I said to him, "Can I do it in Prague? Uh, because this is a city that I'd been to, a city that I enjoyed living in, uh, as so it's visiting, and I could see myself uh, living in." He said, "Sorry, you have to be based in Warsaw." Um, because that's where business is based uh, and that's where uh, more of the geopolitical clout, if you like, in this part of the world is based. Um, I love Warsaw, I love living there, but um, uh, I, sometimes when I visit Prague, I think what might have, might have been. Um, before, before I was in Warsaw, I was in London, and before that I was in Bombay and then New Delhi. Um, so without telling you which is which, I've seen the best and the worst of city planning uh, during my short career as a journalist. Um, anyway, uh, enough about me. Um, we've got a fantastic panel uh, here to talk uh, about what you've just heard for about half an hour or so. Um, so let's get them all on stage. First, Carl Weisbrod, who's the chairman of the City Planning Authority in New York. City Planning Commission, sorry. Um, Omar uh, Kualelat, who's the chairman of the Association of Developers here in Prague. Uh, anywhere you'd like. Good to see you again. And finally, thank you. And Pavel Strablov, who is the senior project manager at Penta, also here in Prague. All right. Okay. Um, we'll kick off. Um, Carl, if, if, if you could talk a bit. I mean, you've got 35 years of experience in planning cities. How, how important is the plan? How important is the way in which a city thinks of itself growing? Can you hear me? There we yes. go. Yes. Okay. I think that uh, obviously for any city, a plan is crucial if it's going to have any control over its own destiny as opposed to simply uh, letting things happen. And what I find um, uh, intriguing about this plan is that it is taking into account um, what Prague is today and building on that um, and has a set of values many of which, if not all of which, I share uh, that uh, create a, a basis for civic engagement and, and discussion. Um, that said, I think the, the, the challenge for any city and any plan is how you move from uh, an aspirational set of values and, uh, and goals uh, and apply those to actually realize those goals. And, and I think that's the most difficult step in any plan because it requires extremely strong and focused um, municipal leadership. Um, it requires the uh, investment community and the civic community to have a general consensus. And it requires taking that, uh, those aspirational goals and uh, establishing a uh, a strong, detailed set of initiatives to realize those goals with time frames and metrics that enable one to measure it along the way. And so that, I think, is probably the next step for Prague, and, um, uh, and that will determine how successful, ultimately, this will be. I mean, Omar, as, a, as, as someone, as a developer and someone who represents developers, how, how important is it that y you guys know what's going on in terms of how you then go about your business? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, from a developer's perspective, uh, one of the biggest difficulties we have uh, in, 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 uh, in Prague is actually to, uh, is to actually get permits and go through the whole permitting process. Uh, definitely very happy to see that there is a certain vision in terms of which could potentially put certain, let's say, regulations. For us, regulation is, or clarity of the rules is definitely something that we do welcome. On the other hand, um, having said that, I'd have to say that um, 
what, we're, what I've seen right now, which is more of the Metropolitan Plan and not the Strategitsky Plan, right? Um, and I've had the chance to read the Strategitsky Plan, and we see a lot of, uh, let's say, micro look at certain aspects which have been deformed, through architecture, have been deforming Prague where basically developers look at individual sites and then they did build within the current regulations, but the current regulations don't have certain conformity. And this is definitely helping the conformity. But what, I'm, what, what, what we're missing a little bit is a certain vision, a certain mm. strategy mm. for the city. So if I would just very, very simply say, uh, the first option is driven by the problem that the city has certain higher services costs. So by, because the city has higher services costs, developers are asked to move in. The second one, which is the brownfields and, and infrastructure, and we saw Bubne. I mean, in that side, there's a train that passes in the middle. So maybe the city has to look at the infrastructure, because changing the infrastructure there could yeah. actually move it. So it's not only about saying, okay, we want to build these locations, and we're fully in support for it. But I think there needs to be another step uh, going, going forward. If we look at uh, the fill-ins, so the fill-ins have a lot of uh, regulation issues. You know, you have strict regulations on light here, for instance, mm. what they call the hygiene regulations. Mm. Anyway, I could go on and on. I definitely welcome the initiative, and I think there are a lot of good things in, in what, we've, uh, what we've seen mm. uh, here. Nevertheless, potentially it has to be a more complex and, have, and, and, we, and maybe from my side and putting uh, development aside, it would be good to see what is the city's priorities, mm. you know, what are the city's priorities? We saw a lot of architecture here, a lot of sort of, let's say, telling the developers how, they, how, you, how you would see them conform in their architecture within the, the beauty of Prague, which we definitely help, but how, how is that going to help development uh, as such, as the industry? Pavel, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of businesses around this region and, and a lot of the time, government and politics comes up as sort of a hindrance. But in this sense, it seems like politics and the government is a real help for, for you guys. If there's a synergy between the two, it makes your life a lot easier. No, I would say, you know, we definitely see an effort on the side of the city to, you know, collaborate and find uh, some strategies uh, in this. But I think the biggest challenge we have is really the time frame under which we are working. Because if you look at the processes uh, in Prague, in Czech Republic, I mean, even this master plan has been on and off for a long time, and even the time frame of completion of this is, was originally 2020, now we're looking at 2022. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Omar said, you know, businesses, like developers, they need to have clear guidance in terms of what's possible, what's not possible. Mm -hmm. Having Carl here, for example, one of our major projects in Prague, uh, a regeneration of a train station, mm -hmm. now designed by Zaha Hadid, and, uh, you know, at the time of the set events of 9-11s in New York, we have initiated a change of master plan. And by the time we opened the buildings in New York, we got the approval from the city. And wow. there was no big change in the master plan at all. Uh, so, I mean, this just shows the bureaucratic process that mm. unfortunately slows down uh, the way things move ahead. Mm. And uh, I think that's really where the city you know, we can't, the process, it can't take so long. Mm. And I think this is where we struggle. And even in the presentation, you know, obviously a lot of effort has, put in, has been put into it, but we have seen out of the, like, six scenarios, there was a question mark on three. Mm. Uh, so we see there is no consensus yet. Mm. And our worry is, you know, there will be another, obviously discussion needs to take place, but there has to be some strong leadership mm. where the city says, this is what's the plan. Mm. Are these, are these issues that you, you, you've heard through the whole of your career? Do you, do you of, course, uh, of course, and uh, you know, uh, I think in probably in every city, um, I have rarely heard developers say the city is moving with great efficiency <laughs> and speed <laughs> to um, uh, realize their goals. I, I'll say sort of three, th 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 Fundamentally, there are three tools that uh, a, a city can use in, in implementing its vision and its plan. One, obviously, is land use strategy and uh, land use regulation. A second, which uh, uh, both Omar and Pavel talked about, is the efficiency and um, response of local government. 
And the third, which I, I have to say I didn't entirely understand the goal here in this, in this plan, the, how a municipality allocates its resources, because I think that really ultimately becomes a major test in how serious a municipality is toward meeting its goals. Mm -hmm. uh, all municipalities have, have uh, limited resources. Um, uh, they can't, few, I don't think any municipality can achieve everything it wants in the time frame it wants to achieve it and has to make some hard choices about how it allocates its tax dollars. Mm -hmm. and, um, and ultimately that becomes, uh, to me, the uh, standard by which anyone in the public can determine how serious a municipality is toward meeting its goals, mm -hmm. whether it's mm -hmm. infrastructure, whether it's brownfields, whether it's uh, subsidies to help uh, development in certain areas or whatever. Um, uh, that's an allocation of resources that provides an early signal about how serious the municipality is. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, Ivan, I'm, I'm keen to bring you guys in here uh, to defend it, if you like. Though defend is a, a powerful word. I mean, do, do you, how much did the concerns of business and the thinking of money come into this uh, when you're planning it? Well, I think uh, it's all behind the, the, the planning which we have. I think we, we try to push some, sometimes more than it's uh, obvious uh, mm -hmm. in our position to be an institute for the city of Prague, mm -hmm. to push politicians and the representatives to really take care of these questions and uh, really to bring them into the discussion and to show them the perspectives which are based on, on the spendings of city. You know, just for your information, the, we have great public transport, but we know that it uh, takes one third, one mm. quarter of the annual budget. Wow. So then you have, of course, <coughs> limited resources for other investments. So mm. we know that uh, it has to be somehow balanced, and uh, we see and we believe that uh, we should talk maybe more with all different people, mm. including uh, yeah. our leaders, to really uh, show them the, the concrete or specific numbers uh, and to see that the development of cities is really related to the money and the position of Prague. Mm. We, we, are, we are aware of, of that situation and I think uh, it is behind or it must be seen from the plan. Maybe we should uh, work also on that to show it better. Sure. I mean, Pavel, I'm, I'm, I'm struck in this region that a lot of, I mean, Poland aside, a lot of the other countries so much of their economy revolves around the city, the, the capital city, you think of Budapest or even in the Baltics. Do you think Prague recognizes that it's in competition with all those cities and that developers and financiers can go elsewhere if they're not being adequately looked after in, in, in maybe their home city? No, I, I think we see that the politicians increasingly recognize that there is in a way a competition. We see, you know, multinational companies, they look at the region and they are considering, you know, should they move to Budapest, Prague or Warsaw. I think the historical experience was that all the CEOs liked to sit in Prague, but the drag of the economy moves towards Warsaw. So slowly we see, the, you know, the position that Prague historically had is a little bit losing in the competition with Warsaw. And, you know, our company, we have, uh, we have some developments in Warsaw as well. Mm. I must say, from the planning point of view, Warsaw didn't go into the big challenge of changing the master plan for the whole city, but you're looking at particular quarters mm. where maybe that's where you can find a quicker consensus. So we see some parts of the city being already covered by an updated master plan, some parts of the city not being covered where there is a dispute, but it helped them to unlock the areas which are not disputed. And maybe there is an ongoing discussion on, uh, on areas which might be a little bit of a challenge. Mm. Whereas what we see in Prague is, you know, we are trying to have a, an overall plan, which is great. But at the same time, it goes to a detail, which will make it very difficult to, to you know, get it approved within, again, coming back to my original topic in mm. the time frame. So I think in this, when you look at, look at it from the business point of view, I think Prague is a little bit losing through these, like, long term processes in competition, for example, what I can compare to is Warsaw. Mm. Uh, Omar, we were discussing earlier that this, there's a lot of ideology in this plan. There's a lot of uh, 
blue sky thinking in, in terms of the ethics, if you like, of it and the, and the feeling. I mean, is that helpful or is that does it make it more complicated for business because you want details, hard facts? So first of all, to explain, uh, what I was talking about is the strategic plan, which we weren't really looking at the strategic plan. And I would have to say that I support every single step that you've basically uh, mentioned today because it's literally, it says, if you go there, this is what we're expecting you to do, this is the height you're expecting you to do, and, uh, and we have less maneuver for controversy and extending the time. So this is step one. Nevertheless, if I look at the strategic plan, which for me, is a set of ethical codex. It's, it's an ethical codex as opposed to a strategic plan. It says a lot of things of how things should be right, good, etc. Mm. But I'm just thinking of strategy versus urban planning and architecture. So for instance, when we're saying tall buildings, is that because we want to attract a certain type of you know, multinationals? Then I look at the strategic plan, and the strategic plan talks about creativity, about sort of, and for me, the, the creative businesses are more in business parks, you know, mm. as opposed to skyscrapers, for instance, mm. you know, and how you set the urban setting for what your strategy aspires. So unfortunately for me, there, it's great that we're trying to write a strategy, but I'd like to understand the strategy a little bit more. Are we mainly the city of culture, and therefore we want the Czechs to live in the city center? And I see, for instance, in this plan, which is the metropolitan plan, saying a move back to the city center, whilst I look at the strategic plan, mm. and it says decentralization, actually. It says creating uh, community hubs in different parts of Prague for the p local people that are living there. Again, I would like to say that it's very good that we're starting. I agree with every single step, because it gives clarity. Um, for a developer, we need the detail more than the big picture because we want to get our projects going and, and we don't want to go through the whole philosophical uh, debate. I appreciate the philosophical de debate. It should be taken, it should be taken further, mm. but I'm still seeing a sort of a, of a mismatch. Mm. Carl, I'm keen to ask you about this. I mean, Prague obviously is, is one of the most beautiful cities in, in, in Europe. It, it a lot of people have an idea of it in their head uh, before they even arrive. The same is obviously true of New York in a different way, but there's a, there's a, there's a certain way the city has developed and, and the, the image it's built of itself. Does that make it harder or does it make it easier when you're trying to plan new things that try to fit in with that ethos? Or would you rather have a blank sheet of paper? Well, I, I actually think it makes it easier because it, you have a basis and a foundation to build on and um, uh, so, I, in, in my view, it makes it much, much easier when you have the both depth of culture here, the history, the uh, ar architectural quality um, uh, that and, and authenticity that makes uh, mm. uh, makes a, a good foundation for planning. That said, I think that there's uh, one of the most difficult issues for planners generally is. How you, how you mesh um, the goals of a strategic plan and the desire for predictability on the part of investors and mm. developers and people who live in a city with the need in a dynamic city for uh, flexibility mm. and the ability to recognize that market forces are going to be changing. Omar talked about the challenge between um, are we creating skyscrapers for multinational financial services companies or for creative companies like Google, um, mm. for example, mm. and, and, or, which is a different type of building entirely. And I'm not sure you can entirely say one or the other as we've seen the world's economy change so dramatically over the past decade or two and the likelihood that it's going to change even more dramatically in the years to come. Mm. So how you balance that flexibility with a degree of certainty is really the, uh, one of the, the arts of planning. There's a lot of nodding from this sofa. I think we've got, we've got, we've got agreement there. But Pavel, is there a, is there a, a not, not just talking about uh, Penta, but uh, in the market, is there a, a, a desire to invest in Prague? Is there, a, is there a real headstrong sort of willingness to invest here or are people unsure? Well, it's a lovely city, so I mean, obviously, we, we want to live here, we want to work here, and uh, you know, we want to have nice projects here, so I think there's definitely interest. But uh, I think what's quite interesting is then from the development market point of view, we have seen uh, a lot of the international developers have actually left the market because they have found it easier elsewhere. Mm. 
So I think this is, if Prague struggles somewhere, it will be again in attracting, let's say, some big names or international developers who could bring some additional know-how to, to, the, to the place yeah. to convince them that, you know, it's a, it's a place with, a, with predictable rules and, uh, you know, the, some planning that is actually supporting the businesses. Yeah. It's not a hindrance. So I think this will, this will, be, this will be one of the challenges. Uh, but generally, I think still, uh, we see a lot of, you know, now with the upswing in the market, we see a lot of new activity. Mm. And, you know, despite sounding a little bit skeptical, we see a lot of projects happening. And uh, so I think it's still a vibrant city. Mm. But uh, I think it could have been much more vibrant still. Um, that, would you agree with that? Or? Yeah, I think, uh, but there, I mean, uh, First, there is a lot of investor uh, interest in, in Prague because of what Prague is and, and uh, it is a great uh, quality of life and no doubt a fantastic quality in life and we want to get it better and it's actually improved a lot. But I'd just like to point uh, to Carl, definitely it's not an either or, you know, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is when you're making that decision, what are the guidelines you're basically making those decisions on as a planner? So you're basically saying a set of priorities and these are the planners and it goes very much hand in hand with what you guys what you guys do, uh, are doing. And actually for that, then when you're talking to foreign investors, whether they're developers or whether they're multinationals or whether they're just people who want to move here and retire in a beautiful city, mm. it, they, have a, they have clarity of what the city is about. You know? So basically if you're a person saying, well, you know, I want to move to a civilized place and you're thinking, am I going to go to Berlin, to Munich, to Prague, to Vienna, you can very easily actually say what are the differences between or Frankfurt or, Ber or Berlin. You can mm -hmm. very easily. And Prague has a fantastic base. It's a beautiful city and you guys are trying basically to keep that, which is definitely, uh, definitely driven. But what, what I would hope for, uh, and, and that would be going back to Carl's first point, is that the city would allocate resources to keeping that. So if I, if I want to look at the detail is, have you thought about removing Magistrala? I look at Penta's beautiful project by Zaha Hadid, and it basically, there you have a highway running, <laughs> running just at you, but you, it's not your fault. But if we're talking about that, then we set certain priorities, and we will agree that we will all work towards those prior, uh, priorities, private and public, maybe sharing costs mm. in certain things because we're making certain invest investment anyways, but the public sector has to allocate resources mm. in the same places where they want to see improvement. Mm. And basically not just setting regulations for the developer to abide by. We're being told that we're running out of time. This will be the last uh, topic that we discussed. But, but, but Carl, do you, is there a, I mean, obviously there's, there's more of a, a, of a resistance in a city like Prague with its, with its history and with, with the way it looks. It, it, do cities sometimes just have to abandon that and realize that they're going to look different in the future if they want to develop? Or are there ways to, to maintain it? Well, I th there's certainly a ways to maintain it. We, we use uh, techniques of historic preservation, uh, landmarking, mm -hmm. um, uh, districts, special districts, as a means of preserving and uh, protecting the best of our past. And I think that's that easily can be done in the great cities and mm. at the same time encouraging growth. And I think if you look at all the great cities in the world, um, um, uh, even China is now learning that you can't mm. just uh, destroy your past. And, and I, I, I absolutely think that that's essential because the past in, informs the present and informs the future. And mm. every time I talk, when I talk this afternoon, I'm going to start with the past because the past really does inform the future. Mm. Mm. But we heard from the presentation the sort of resistance to, to tall buildings, resistance to changing the, the changing the, the, the. Please jump in. No, it's it's always the question of which was mentioned here about the level of flexibility and the level of house in the different levels of planning in the different let's say schemes of, of delivering. Uh, the, the competencies or, or the governance structure. We all are trying to open the discussion because you know, we have 57 municipalities. I work here for the city of Prague three and a half year and I already have fourth director and the third mayor to work for. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> exactly. This if I say to somebody on some, uh, some meetings coming abroad, wow. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm 
really thankful for the nodes which have been here because we listen to them carefully and we will try to work with them even more than up to now and we would like to cooperate with everybody who is really uh, keen on to, 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 to improve the environment of Prague because that's what we all try to, to do. That's a, a wonderful summary that I probably couldn't have <laughs> even done myself. I've got a big stop sign here. Yeah. We're going to have to kill it. Um, really, gentlemen, thank you very much thank for, you. for all of your thoughts. And let's hopefully continue this conversation between uh, everybody here. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. If I, if, I may, um, if I may indulge the audience for just one question, I think, uh, well, from our perspective, I think there's two things that were brought to the table. And, and one really wasn't, but I think it's been discussed over the last few days and, and months. The leadership aspect is, is hugely uh, uh, important and, and it's missing, uh, I think, and that's, that's a big. You need someone to sort of carry the torch for, for how you're going to attract people into the city and how the de development community can operate uh, to do, again, the things that we like to do, which is public space investment and public infrastructure investment. But the other aspect I think that's missing is participation, which uh, IPER is working a lot on, which they didn't really address in this plan because that's not the purpose of the plan but participation in the process and that's like if we can I'm sure there's lots of questions but because of the time let's just get one question from from the audience so who's uh, who's brave enough to ask a question of one of the panelists okay. we have microphones here in the front there we go we've got lights okay. oh look there's Hello. loads of you so I have a question for Mr. Heinz and Mr. Dushkov, so I will ask in Czech and then I will try to ask in English. Uh, já se chci zeptat na zástavbu těch bývalých nákladových nádraží, jestli je, um, se uvažuje s nějakým návratem železniční dopravy někdy do Prahy a jestli teda uh, tímhle tím nezavíráte možnost zástavby na nákladových nádražích, Teda, možnost toho využití pro železniční dopravu. So I'm asking for uh, development in uh, railway station uh, if uh, there will be some problem if we want uh, load railway transportation to come back in Prague. Great question. Okay, uh, is it okay to answer in English for you? Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, so um, uh, we, we count with that. Uh, in last years, the, um, the share of, of uh, let's say, peri-urban transportation by train is increasing in numbers. It's the only, uh, only a place where we can really increase our share for public transport, so we do support it. But, and the development of the brownfields doesn't really dis uh, destroy or doesn't cancel the opportunity to use the existing stations. But we don't need any more need such a space. The same counts for Masariko and Adraji, that we know that uh, six platforms will be enough. Also for the new railway connection to the airport. So uh, that's one level that for the local transportation. What we know in Prague is that, um, because Warsaw is also comp or competing with us, that we would need more connections also towards the metropolis in the central Europe. You know, it's, it's, it's not really easy to, to get, you are faster in London than in, in Salzburg or Lodz. Yeah, so it's, that definitely is a nightmare traveling around this part of the world. So we know that we have <laughs> by, to... By train, seriously. So we have to find the resources to invest into our, and improve our public infrastructure, especially in terms of railroad traffic, mm. to interconnect uh, the parts of the city and to bring let's say far away traffic and the local traffic to one places and then maybe last thing we also try to somehow work with with the national uh, companies responsible for transportation mm. which is not always easy uh, but it's like everywhere else uh, plus we try to involve uh, people from central bohemian region to really use uh, the transport by train to allocate uh, the park and rides in the central bohemia so then then we can really, mm -hmm. this daily commuting also uh, be done uh, or shared by uh, transport by train. Actually, just on that point, I'm going to keep you from your coffee for two minutes. It, 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 I'm interested to hear what you guys think about that. I mean, in London, King's Cross has just been redone and it's turned that whole region into a, you know, Google's there, the Guardian's there. I think New York's doing the same with Grand Central at the moment. Trying to, does investing in a, in a project that 
involves infrastructure and government and local authority put you off or make you want to join in in, in somewhere like Central Europe? I mean, d if someone says, look, build this brand new office block, it's going to be beautiful, but by the way, there's going to be the train station underneath, you're going to have to deal with the local authorities. Does that make you think, well, wait a second? I well, in infrastructure is key. It's the driver of development. Actually, sure. we had uh, a great guy called Nigel Atkins speak about London development and, uh, uh, and Paris development. Uh, not long ago, organized by the Association of Developers, and basically it showed to which extent likings cross, which extent infrastructure is the key driver. Mm. And actually, understanding the infrastructure development of Prague and the vision of the mm. infrastructure development of Prague would actually answer your question mm. and actually give a lot of guidance for all the developers what uses should be where and how and a clear plan on the delivery of these infrastructures. Because one, say, one thing is to say, we will have a ring road right. in Prague. And the other thing is to wait for the ring road 40 years, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. basically, so this, uh, these, are, these, are, these two things should go hand in hand. Mm. But infrastructure is the key driver. I mean, look at Singapore, look at Dubai, look right. at all the, right. all, all, the, all the cities that have been flourishing. I, I would just say that increasingly, at least in the United States and perhaps in Europe as well, maybe less so in Asia, the, the, these major infrastructure projects, to, you, to your point, are increasingly uh, public-private ventures right. where private development and government, local government, have to work together. And that is extremely complicated. And it really does require, A, mutual trust between government and the private sector. Not always there, but really sure. has, is essential. B, a sophistication on the part of each party as to what uh, what government is responsible for, what the private sector is responsible for, and see a great deal of patience and, um, uh, uh, and close coordination. It's a, it's, it is extremely complicated, but I think increasingly we're going to see major infrastructure projects almost required to be mm. that model. Pavel, do we have those things here as final point? I'm, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm, Pavel, just two, two words, and then we're uh, going to break for coffee, and then Mimi Huang's going to yeah, come yeah. back after. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say we are in it. This Masary train station, that's exactly a collaboration, public-private. Uh, so, I mean, if you look at the opportunities in the city, it's mostly around these areas. Mm. You know, it's a lot of people traffic. It's typically in the city center or close to the city center. And uh, so from this point of view, it's, uh, it's a logical place to look at, and mm. it's... Generally, it's worth the effort, or mm. we hope so, at least. Thank you. But we do have but a big trust deficiency, which we're trying to work on right now. I we're going to work on that over trust. coffee. We're going to work on that over coffee. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.